Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro tutorial review, this time taking a look at M Vintage, which is, a, which is a plugin for both Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion 5. It's part of uh, Motion VFX M Looks series. And what it is, is that it's a retro grading plugin that allows you to create old film style looks just like the one that you see here now on my screen. Now, M Vintage is found in your effects browser. So if we uh, just pause playback for a second, if we scroll down here and we look for M Vintage, you can see we've got just a single effect and filter which we can drag onto our clip. Let me just delete the one I was working on earlier. And you can see that now in the effects, uh, in the inspector, which you can view by clicking on this button here, we've got an array of options. And there are actually five key parameters here that we can adjust. That is uh, roll, drop, shake, prism, and flicker. Now, if we just work from the bottom up, I'm basically just going to give you an overview of the different features and then some of the other ways we can work with M Vintage. If you enable flicker, that basically is allowing is it's basically flicking the opacity of the clip, so that if you see now, it looks like a light's flickering behind the clip. Obviously, a traditional retro look. And for most of these effects, you can see there's a tick box, and then there's a a, a uh, strength slider. So you can bring it right down if you wanted to. So you could just make it a subtle effect, which actually slows down the speed of it as well. Then you've got prism, which is basically as if light is looking through a glass prism, is going to split up uh, the different channels. And then the strength is just going to adjust the skew of them channels, which you can bring it all the way down to zero to just having it a little bit. So it's a bit like a, uh, a TV gone wrong look. I'm just going to disable some of the previous ones so you can see which each one is actually doing. If we just turn off prism now, and then we've got shake. Now, Shake basically does exactly what it says on the tin, as do a lot of these effects. Uh, add Shake to your footage, but you can bring that right down if you just want a really subtle, sort of earthquakey effect. And then you've... If we bring it up, it will go absolutely crazy. And it's an even worse earthquake. And then you've got Drop, which basically set drops frames, so... This is going to drop a frame every uh, few seconds, so it goes up to 30 obviously, so you could just have one frame a second. Obviously I've only got 25p footage, but what it's going to do then is still update every second because just because there isn't just because there isn't 30 frames per second in this clip, it will just limit it, do the maximum limitation, which is one frame a second. And then we've also got roll. Now roll uh, adds a rolling effect so that the image starts to repeat and come down from above simulating a film reel going through. And then we've also got obviously a few more options here. We've got how long it's going to roll for, how long in between each roll if you don't want it to be too aggressive, so you just want it to roll every now and then. And then you can also customise the roll itself, like how big the gap is between the different frames, um, the height in terms of how far it actually comes down, and also the shake, because as it comes down, it doesn't just stay there, it, it carries on wiggling, so you can change the strength of that as well. We'll just go ahead and disable roll now, so we can take a look at this final section, which is basically just and overall strength parameters, um, including these three sliders, which actually correspond more to the interface which we're about to take a look at. Now the interface is a lot more powerful in the sense that it gives you this cool preview system. Uh, if we just go ahead and press the tick box next to edit, it's going to bring up this M Vintage interface, which in itself looks pretty cool. Now, on the left-hand side here, you can see we've got some buttons which correspond to the, the five parameters I was just talking about. And these are basically enable and disable buttons, so we can disable them and enable them here. Um, and now retain the sliders that um, strength that we set when we were going through the actual plugin. 
Now, one of the limitations of this interface is that it basically takes a still shot from the frame that you were looking at, which means you don't get playback and preview within this menu, uh, which obviously can be frustrating because a vintage feel isn't based on a single frame, it's based on the motion, like like the flickering, uh, like the shake, um, and even some of these other features which we're about to take a look at, um, they're all based on motion, so you do have to exit out of this menu and then uh, play back the footage. But it's a nice preview viewer, so it's not too annoying. Now, these are the other three key parameters which I told you about. You have some strength parameters here. Basically, the first one that you've got is your looks. If we just click on this button, as you can see, it was already loaded. We've now got some options here that we can scroll through. And yes, the scroll bar, bar does work. You don't have to click and drag, although you can do if you want. Um, these are basically just different color looks to get you started. And I like this one. It sort of reminds me of Instagram when I post pictures of my food. Um, so I really like this one. Um, and then the next one we've got is Film Burn. Now this is my favorite one because, in my opinion, this you can use outside of the spectrum of vintage. Now, what I mean by that is sometimes light streaks just look cool on, say, like a music video, but you don't want the whole complete vintage look. So, in some respects, that is one of the limitations of M Vintage in the sense that, unlike other color grading programs or plugins, you can't create loads of different looks. It's all around the idea of creating vintage retro looks. However, this is one of the cool features that you could just use by itself and will look pretty snazzy. Um, as you can see, some are more subtle than others. Um, I like this one. I like the streaking down the side. But obviously, what we're going to have to do is come out of this interface in a minute and see how it looks in motion. And then, at the bottom, we've also got scratches. So you can see we can add these different scratch overlays over the top of the footage. And then what we've also got is a strength slider, so we can actually bring this all the way down, or we can bring it all the way up. But this strength bar corresponds to the particular um, wheel of three effects that we're looking at here. So if we go into the, the burn, we can bring just the burn down. And then once we're happy with this look, actually I'm not happy with the scratches. And if we now go ahead and press the OK button, not the X, or else that won't save your changes, that's going to apply the effect that we just added. Now if we just play back, obviously you can see we're not getting a full uh, 25 frames per second playback. Um, if I just press View, Playback, Play Selection, also known as Forward Slash, then it's just going to play this clip over and over again because I've set Loop Playback. And it's looking pretty cool, and you can also see how quickly we've created quite an enticing uh, vertical line-based vintage look. And if we go ahead and throw back in some of these effects, like the flicker, which I think will work pretty cool, uh, bring out the strength. And there you go, we've got this flickering going on here. Uh, so bear in mind if you're using like a lower end consumer camera which looks really digitally um, and by that I mean like it has really bad digital noise um, it's really pixely then M Vintage might not uh, get on with that because or what you might have to do is go with something like the prism so it feels like TV um, rather than film because film obviously doesn't have digital pixels um, now one of the other things I just wanted to quickly take a look at was the fact that it's actually got loads of presets built in and you can also add your own presets which is pretty cool because if you've got a turnaround project really quickly you don't have time to make a custom look so what you can do is if I uh, just get rid of this M Vintage if we now drag over M Vintage so we're working from scratch we've got to create a look really quickly so we can just browse through the presets black and white roll so that's going to add some rolling effect and give it a black and white feel and then you can also see we've got some light burning and scratching going on as well you can also see that they've played around with another feature I didn't talk about which was the burns um, the way the burn is added to the um, the overlay effect sorry 
uh, which is obviously add screen or dodge, which is one other thing to play around with, and that depends how it's going to interact with the video. You can see there's some other presets we can look for as well. That's a really cool looking vintage thing. And then if we press uh, Command C and then select all our remaining clips and press Command Shift V, we can choose to copy over the M Vintage effect and press Paste. And bam, all of them now have the same look because it doesn't just copy the effect, it copies all the parameters of the effect. So you can really quickly create a nice look. And I really like the fact that these presets are built into the actual plugin rather than being separate looks in the effects browser because it saves you having to scroll through all these different effects and clicking and dragging, which obviously can waste a lot of time. Render times as well are adequate. They're, they're good. They're not super fast. Obviously, I don't have the fastest machine in the world, but they're, they're, they're more than suitable for the extensiveness of the grades that you generally are applying with a vintage look effect. And as far as vintage look plugins go, this is definitely one of the more sophisticated and advanced ones around. It's going to cost you $89, but that gets you the plugin for both host applications, Motion 5 and Final Cut Pro 10. And I'm actually going to make a Motion 5 tutorial um, taking a look specifically at this plugin and how it works in Motion, which is actually very similar. Um, and I'm sure once you've seen this, you'll be able to get up and go and and start working on it in motion as well. Hopefully I've covered everything so you can now get started working with M Vintage and I'd strongly recommend you going and checking it out. Um, MotionVFX.com, they specialize in um, different plugins for and templates for Motion and Final Cut Pro 10 so definitely go and check that out and uh, let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the description if there's any other cool plugins um, or effects in Final Cut Pro 10 that you want me to look at and I will go through some of them with you and also if you have any other tutorial requests then we obviously always take it on board so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon with a brand new tutorial